Welcome back to the channel. The 14th of February 1797. The Spanish entry into the war in 1796 has significantly altered the balance of power in the Mediterranean. Our fleet has been forced to give up our hard-won gains at Corsica and Elba and escape into the Atlantic. Since then our fleet has been blockading Cadiz and searching for an opportunity to strike back at the Spanish. We have received reports that a Spanish fleet has left Cartagena with Cadiz as their destination. The easterly winds, the Levantar, have been blowing fiercely in the last several days, which will have disrupted their route. The Mediterranean fleet under your command is trying to intercept the Spanish fleet. You've been reinforced by some ships from the Channel fleet, but should still expect to be outnumbered. And so we need all hands on. We don't quite have enough crew, but we have enough ships ready to go. The Battle of Cape St. Vincent is actually where John Jarvis earned his titles as the first Earl of St. Vincent. The Spanish fleet wasn't expecting a battle and is still split into two groups while we are in full formation. The best approach is to get between them so we can hit them on both sides at once while keeping them disorganized and demoralized. Once we've positioned ourselves to keep them out from forming a line, we should try to focus down one of their capital ships. After the first group is dealt with, the second should be easier to deal with. And here we go, we've got a bunch of new ships. HMS Excellent, HMS Captain, HMS Diadem, and HMS Namua. And what do we have here? It appears to be HMS Britannia, 112 gun First raid ship of the line? Were we lucky enough to be tasked and given a, uh, an upgrade? Even though we've just earned ourselves a new flagship, the Audacity, we have a lot more available. And it seems like we have a, a wind disadvantage. We can't really approach the Spanish fleet. All of our ships are tacking across the wind. We're trying to form them up into one solid line perhaps. Now I've never had to control this many ships and this may may prove to be a challenge. We've got a little bit of time before the Spanish are able to do anything. They are just in a normal fleet formation. They are not ready for battle. But we can't really approach them. The one bonus is that we do have the bonus, uh, the advantage of range here. The wind is pushing our gun elevation high. And so our flagship, our new flagship, the HMS Britannia, will get to put first shots out on this little seventh rate here. The snow. And we have a little bit of chaos happening at the rear of the line here. The wind is not very helpful. Very inaccurate shots there. I don't think we got any hits. One bounce. All right, All right we're going to speed it up now. There's not much I can do about the, the line. It seems to be in a bit of chaos. And as we're running right up against the wind, these ships are going to have trouble getting into any sort of formation. I might break off the smaller ships, HMS Falcon. They are better at handling in wind conditions that aren't to our favor. Trying to turn them across, tack across, and then we can come up the west side. Meanwhile, back at the front of the formation, HMS Britannia is just casually sitting there. We've got three shots. HMS Namur looks to be a second rate. Conde, Conde de Regia. Conde de Regla. <laughs> wow, I'm going to murder these. The Mergicano. There are quite a few ships there. They don't look to be very powerful. We are vastly outgunning the, the Spanish in this engagement. More shots out there. 
If they come downwind with the wind behind them, we might just get free shots at them for a long time. This little seventh raid is pretty brave, heading up the formation, running the fight straight to the British. Doesn't seem to be a lot happening here. Agamemnon and the Arden have all turned about. What is going on? All right, some of the bigger ships are in range now, so we'll target the Ardent. This Ardent class, the Atlante. Not very effective. Kind of stumped as to what to do. The wind is really... I'm, I'm almost tempted just to try and fight against it. Keep that group there floundering about. And then attack the line of Spanish as they form up. They seem to be forming a line that's going to head down to the northeast. So we've got a nice, nice, absolutely chaotic formation. They're all trying to form in together behind each other. Need to break these guys off. HMS Canberra is running up the princess. Despite the seeming um, amount of fighting that we're going to have to do, it's pretty sedate at the moment. I do remember one little anecdote from the Battle of Cape St. Vincent. One of the spotters yelled out to Sir John. He said, Five ships of the line spotted, sir. And Sir John said, Noted. Ten ships of the line spotted, sir. Noted. Twenty ships of the line spotted, sir. Noted. Twenty-five ships of the line spotted, sir. By gosh, man, please be quiet. If there is more than 50, the die is cast and our fate remains to be seen. Now, I'm not quoting that. It is an anecdote. That just shows the pragmatism of officers of the British Navy. And Sir John Jarvis did go on to become quite the naval reformer. He was quite a strict disciplinarian. And he instituted some reforms to stop very, very low morale within the British Navy at the time. There are a few mutinies and other events <clears throat> and Sir John was very very harsh in his discipline but he could also be very merciful in his compassion. There was another time where all the fleet was at rest and they threw a sail out into the water so that all the men could have a swim and one of the seamen jumped into the ocean and when he got out he realized that his back pay and all of his prize money from years of service were in the back of his trousers and all the notes were ruined and he wept. He broke down because his hard-earned work was lost and St. John asked him what the matter was, why was he staining British oak with his tears and the man told him what had happened and Sir John went into his stateroom and came back with 70 pound which was a lot of money at the time and it was 70 pound from his own money and he gave it to the sailor and he said you've been a great you've been a great seaman a faithful and loyal subject and you deserve your pay but then there was another time where two men were tried of mutiny on a saturday and sir john demanded they be executed on a sunday and they were executed as his orders but one of his admirals or one of his uh, lesser lesser officers protested and said you shouldn't be killing men on a Sunday that's the Sabbath and Sir John demanded that the the Admiralty remove that particular officer from service um, or he would himself resign and sure enough the Admiralty got rid of that guy that complained so Sir John did have quite amount of sway and a lot of it came from his no-nonsense approach to the matters at hand. He just did not tolerate any kind of malarkey. He did allow the Irish to be on his ships, but no one was allowed to speak Irish. Everyone had to speak good old-fashioned British. It was uh, highly suggested that you do in his presence anyway. 
But despite all that, he was very loved by the crews and the men of the Royal Navy and they referred to him as Old Jarvie. There was even a young captain who was aboard HMS Victory that slapped Sir John on the back and said, by John, by God, Sir John, we gave them a good licking. And uh, he tolerated that. <clears throat> Although it never happened again. So yeah, there's another little snippet from history that I found to be quite endearing. Just in time for us to really get engaged with the Spanish here. We're trying to bring the lead of our flagships around. And so there are quite a lot of Spanish ships now forming up on our disorganized Battle of Cape St. Vincent. We're not doing it nearly as well as what Sir John did himself. I saw the battle plans for it and it's, it's quite interesting how they came about. I have not recreated that in any way, shape or form at this stage. But we are now in the thick of it. The lead ship, the Conde de Regle, has taken a lot of damage just running down our line over the last four or five minutes. And our disorganized chaos has now become organized chaos. And they're putting fire on from every direction. We're going to smash through that Spanish line if we can. Splitting up into two different wings now. We've got the light ships off by themselves as well. HMS Britannia is going to bring up hard now and follow this formation. And we're going to run Audacity through to try and block off the Mexicano. San Furman there is taking a lot of damage. She's been smashed up all up the length of the line and now is wavering. Oh, San Furman has sunk. Going to make sure we don't have any collisions. Try and bring up the Ardent for a boarding action on the Conde de Regler. HMS alert. Bring her around. Things are starting to look orderly now. We've got two attack lines on either side of the Spanish formation. We're sort of funneling them into a death zone. Ready for their assimilation or destruction. Hey, we've got to make sure we keep our light ships out of the main engagement. We're just going to use them as a harassing force. HMS Falcon's taking a little bit of damage. Audacity is moving up on the Mexicano. Moving to grape shot now to, as we start that boarding action. The Arrogant and the Astute tangling up there. Fortunately not taking too much collision damage. The other element of the Spanish is starting to approach the south flank of our line that's turning about. Audacity's trying to get close there for a boarding action. We'll bring Astute away from Arrogant. HMS Alcest will take the Atlante. Turn around with the wind. We weren't able to catch her this ship here, so we've got HMS Alert as a backup there to intercept her. The light ships are firing at our own Audacity, which we need to stop. We'll target the Ferme. Get our two frigates engaged with the enemy Spanish frigates. Pound for pound, wait for wait. We have a bit of experience fighting the Spanish. They were our first opponent and their ships can be powerful. We haven't seen anything too strong. Oh, we've had a detonation. The Principe de Asturias has sunk. And it, it looks like we're already starting to subsume their formation. The first boarding action on the Mexicano has been successful. Load her up with men and get her out of the action. Then we'll move Audacity to assist our two frigates. Arrogant will come around with San Nicolas and shoot him in the rear. We've had another surrender. Another sinking, sorry. The Conde does not want to come close to us. And I don't blame her. HMS Alcest chasing up the Atlante. L significant amount of damage has been done, but she is supported by the Soberano. HMS Falcon running up on San Pablo. San Pablo looks like a slightly larger ship. 
Our small warships do have our least experienced crews on them. They're our training ships. But we have thrown lines now. We're matching speed and we're going to board anyway. We have lots of support. If we need to, we can just do the old fashioned extra boats in the water to add reinforcements. The Fermé here has got a nice angle on the Arrogant. We need to get Mexicano out of the action. And our disorganized chaos has managed to separate the two fleets as the briefing wanted us to do. And we've got these guys in a lot of chaos. We've Our chaos has just infected them. We've broken their lines. They've gone all different directions. There is no cohesion to their defense. While we still have enough ships in a line to counter any actual reformations they might make. Moving up on the Condé now, we are going to board her. She's in a pretty poorly state. I'm hoping she surrenders and then we can get some damage teams on board. Another large ship for the fleet is exactly what we need. We have a lot more and we've just finished the mission, but I'm not going to finish it there. The Battle of Cape St. Vincent will be decisive victory. Plus we have a few larger warships heading up now from the south. I'm not satisfied that this battle is over and I'm not content to run away when we have the advantage. So we need to consolidate our win up here and then to swarm this southern force. HMS Canberra is taking a fair amount of damage because San Pablo is engaged on both sides. HMS Falcons boarding action didn't... They must have disengaged. We are wavering, so we're going to bring up HMS Arrogant for assistance. If we can get the boarding actions commenced again, they'll stop firing on the port side. Arrogant's got Ferme and... San Nicolas on her port side engaged. She's shooting through the Ferme to get to the other ship. Agamemnon is on fire. Agamemnon is a name reminis reminiscent of the Battle of Troy, King Agamemnon. Both ships are on fire now. The Fury of Battle. That is a, actually quite a serious fire there on the stern decks. HMS Arrogant was formerly our protagonist ship. She's now just part of the fleet, but she will be remembered for many years to come. And I'm sure all the viewers of this series will be quite happy to see Arrogant make it through the entire campaign. She has been an absolute workhorse and she earned her name. We took her arrogantly and we treated her arrogantly. And she rewarded us with lots and lots of ships. We have the San Antonio under our control now. Agamemnon is still on fire though, but now that the battle has ceased, the damage control teams will be able to concentrate on that fire and it has gone out. Mexicano is flooding and all of her crew are currently working on flooding, so we may lose that ship. Every single man on board is working the pumps. HMS Canberra and HMS Falcon are struggling to take down this larger ship. But Audacity is now lending her hand. Falcon had to pull back. She's a little bit too damaged. She's lost her main mast. That's probably the most significant damage Falcon's taken throughout this campaign. She is a long-lasting uh, long ship as well. Arrogant and Falcon are probably our longest serving ships. We did lose our starter ship and we did lose a couple of uh, frigates early on. The Royal George will also be fondly remembered. The San Ildefonso is the same name of the treaty that they French signed with the Spanish. San Pablo lost a lot of crew. She's running now. HMS Canberra has been 
quite brave. She was taking a lot of fire. We'll get the bigger warships after her. Falcon and Canberra can move off together. They've done their job. Their job was to harass and, if they could, board. We don't want that really little ship, I don't think. Although there are a bunch of crew rowing to her now. The San Ildefonso has now sunk. And our cannon are shooting the men in the waters. Now the southern force of the Spanish are chasing up hard on our stern. But they don't know what they're getting themselves into. Mexicano, I'm really worried about your, your safety. Slowing to a crawl. The water seems to be lapping up on the gun decks and I believe she's sinking. I'm going to try and get some extra crew over there to assist with that, but I may have left this too late. Yeah, they're in a lot of trouble. We're going to move a ship over there to assist with their rescue if needed. Atlante is stopped for some reason, anchored. She's sinking too. All the crew are on damage control for that ship as well. Audacity's putting long range fire on her, risking the Ardent. HMS Canberra's going to struggle to get off the map. Oh, she's about to be engaged. That southern... Are they the last remaining of that main force that I just didn't notice? I'm going to bring the Alcest over. We'll attach Astute to her. And we'll get Atlante under a boarding action. And then we'll try and save the ship. HMS Excellent and this formation here have slowed right down. They're being blocked. Mexicano is just stopped dead in the water. She won't move. Canberra is struggling to move too because the wind has now shifted to the east. Alceste is caught at, as the wind changed and now she's stuck there being pushed backwards. The Ardent missed her shot because that ship's gone down. We just slide right past as the men are loading into their boats. Got nice tee shots there on those two Spanish ships that are running up against each other. We're going to bring Agamemnon around. She's going to race down there and intercept if she has to. I was trying to get these eyes off and now they're facing the wrong way. Canberra's come about now, got the wind behind her. But she's waiting for Falcon. They're in a formation together. We'll have to race. That ship's not to be worried about. It's only 40 gunner. They can run away. We're still shooting the men in the waters. Making sure they don't try to get back on that boat. There are a lot of boats in the water and no doubt these ships are going to try and pick them up. Mexicano's still no good but the men have managed to keep her afloat. Get those extra men in there as I ordered before. Britannia can come about and we'll all head down to fight that main Spanish force that's left. Making sure not to run each other. <laughs> Just knocked the mast off the front there I think alright this has not been a very orderly battle I was not expecting to be controlling so many ships not from the start anyway I mean I knew there were a lot of British but I thought it was going to be like allied ships or something like that so hopefully we get to keep all of these extra ships that we were given from the Channel Fleet. Oh, Excellent's in a bit of danger here. She's got enemies ahead and astern. Cut in the boat. Hurry up. Row, row, row. San Jose tried to break through our line and got absolutely decimated. As Britannia was turning and tacking through the wind, she managed to get a absolutely 
brutal broadside and it's just destroyed her hull. Captain Rowley Hinton has been wounded. Right, so we've got three formations looking up. HMS Canberra needs to get off the battlefield with her damaged escort there. Mexicano's got more crew on board and they're all working on the flooding. Yeah, she's in a lot of danger, Mexicano. They just can't get her fixed. San Jose has sunk. A fiery sinking, that is for sure. As the, as the smoke clears on HMS Namua's brutal broadside, as we like to say. Excellence is sitting there taking a pounding. And then as they come through, she's shooting at them. So they're exposing their stern in a desperate bid to get their survivors, I'm assuming. But all they're doing is pushing themselves straight into our other formation, led by the Audacity. Now it looks like there's still a lot of blue dots on the map. Got a couple of running off there in the distance. They don't want anything to do with our fight. So we'll leave them alone. And we'll just use the wind. Wherever the wind takes us, that's who we'll fight. Infante taking a fair amount of damage. She's lost her pumps. We've got a little bit of crossover here, which is not not very good for a friendly fire. But we are definitely enter entering the closing stages of this engagement. I've said it a couple of times, it wasn't very it wasn't very organized. And a lot of the reason that we won, I think, is because we just simply had so many ships of the line. We'll get Agamemnon on the Perla. She's got more crew. She's already completed one boarding action. So most of her crew either perished or is in now in control of another ship. But I'm really gla glad that I instituted that naming convention because now I know which ships were actually mine and which were given to me. So if we do a lot of the fighting with the other ships, perhaps if we don't get them, we won't have to pay for them. Although I would like to keep HMS Britannia. Rename her Victory. The Perla has surrendered. All the hard fighting's now done. This large warship here it has taken so many different types of critical. They're completely surrounded by the British. But they're really desperate to rescue their sailors. So we have to commend them for that, I guess. And we are just running over the top of their boats, almost. HMS Ardent's got one just under her bow, almost. HMS Alcest, Canberra's running with the wind, well protected by lots of ships between her and the enemy. Gradually trying to ease off her injured HMS Falcon. The Mexicano seems to be going okay. It's not moving still. She ain't going anywhere. She must have taken some really bad damage. Infante Don Paleo is about to give up. Santo Domingo is just being crushed in the destruction derby. There's no way to sail, they just have to ride out it. Salvador del Mundo. They're making a they're trying to get to their troops, but my ships are just in the way. So we're going to call this a victory. I'm going to mop up and I'll see you at the victory screen.
We were fairly evenly matched in men and guns, we just had bigger ships and less of them. Which is usually the deciding factor in these kinds of engagements. I didn't capture as many as I would have liked, but of the 22 ships, only 4 got away. So that's pretty, pretty good ratio. Oh, for winning, we actually get HMS Victory. Nice, very nice reward. Grand Knight Cross, awarded for those who have extended His Majesty's borders. I'll see you on the next episode. Commander Tyrael, out.